I'm Arthur St. Antoine with Motor Trend Magazine, and I'm here in Pensacola, Florida today with the 2009 Chevrolet Corvette ZR1. Codename, Blue Devil. The fastest, most powerful, and at roughly $117,000, by far the most expensive production automobile General Motors has ever built. That's right, more than $100,000 for a Chevrolet. But even at that price, you could consider the ZR1 something of a bargain. That's because this incredible Corvette loves fried Ferrari for breakfast. It lunches on smoked Lamborghini. Dinner, baked Porsche. The ZR1 has even been known to snack on Nissan GTRs. It makes you wonder, can anything keep up with, much less intimidate, Chevrolet's awesome utterly unbelievable blue devil. How about a blue angel? Hmm, just saying the name Blue Angels gets the heart racing. Now the oldest active flight demonstration squadron in the world, the Blues were created in 1946 to attract new recruits to the United States Navy by showcasing the talents of some of the finest pilots on the planet. Each year, the team performs some 70 air shows for more than 15 million spectators. And what the six demo pilots do with their glistening Boeing FA-18 Hornet strike fighter jets borders on the unbelievable. The show's high-G aerobatic maneuvers, which include loops, barrel rolls, minimum radius turns, inverted flight, place intense demands on pilots and aircraft alike. And if you think it all looks terribly dangerous, well, you're right. In the Blue Angel's 63-year history, nearly 10% of its pilots have died in training or air show accidents. Make no mistake, this is literally one of the most breathtaking shows on Earth. Maybe this will help explain just how challenging flying for the Blue Angels really is. If my shoulder were one hornet flying in formation, my hand would be another. That's right, these guys often fly just three feet apart and at more than 400 miles per hour. The right stuff? This is righteous stuff. Now it's time to meet my adversary, the man who will attempt to outgun me and my Blue Devil. Meet the man in charge of narrating the shows from the ground and giving VIP rides in Blue Angel 7, the team's only two-seat FA-18, Lieutenant Ben Walburn. Call sign, Baxter. Okay, Baxter, this is the Corvette ZR1, the fastest car General Motors has ever built. In fact, this is one of the fastest cars on the planet. 638 supercharged V8 horsepower. It'll do zero to 60 in 3.3 seconds. Does the quarter mile in just over 11 seconds at 130 miles an hour. It's very, very quick. What do you got? Uh, what I have here today is a uh, twin engine tactical fighter, uh, Boeing F-18 Hornet with uh, about 32,000 pounds of thrust coming out the back end. Ouch, so that's quite a bit. Well, the ZR-1 will go over 200 miles an hour. How fast does your Hornet go? Uh, this Hornet here can do about Mach 1.8 which is roughly about 1,400 miles an hour. Okay, well, that's pretty fast. How much does it cost? This one here is probably about $25 million. 25 million? That's more than Simon Cowell makes in a whole week. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you think your Blue Angel has the stuff to beat my Blue Devil? Uh, we'll take a look at it and we'll try, we'll see. All right, let's find out. All right, sounds good. Our matchup is simplicity itself. From a standing start, we'll run a straight one mile drag race. First one across the finish line wins. The runways here at Naval Air Station Pensacola are 8,000 feet long. That means I'll have enough time to accelerate the Blue Devil up to the mile marker, at which point I'll probably be doing around 180 miles an hour. 
then jump on the giant carbon ceramic binders and bring myself to a safe stop. Baxter and the Blue Angel will be in a parallel runway about 500 feet away. Hard to say how fast he'll be going at the mile marker, but definitely he'll be airborne well before then. Now I get the sense that Baxter's feeling pretty cocky about his jet right now. On the other hand, it's going to take that Hornet a while to spool up, and my ZR-1, well, it is just blindingly quick off the line. If I make a good enough start, well, enough conjecture. Let's do this thing. A good start will be critical for my chances. Baxter has 32,000 pounds of afterburner fed thrust on his side, but I've got the electrifying acceleration of 638 supercharged horsepower. My ZR1 can reach 60 miles an hour in just 3.3 seconds and blazes through the quarter mile in just over 11 seconds at 130 miles per hour. Hopefully, the twin General Electric turbofans and Baxter's Hornet will still be spooling up as I rocket into the lead. And besides, I could get lucky. Maybe Baxter will accidentally leave his jet's tail hook down or something. Racers ready? Three, two, one, go. That wasn't even close. All right, fine. I'd be lying if I said I actually expected the Blue Devil to be able to beat the $25 million Blue Angel in a drag race. But I thought at least, well, I'd lead for a while. Instead, Lieutenant Walburn and his FA-18 were already pulling ahead by around 80 miles per hour. I was barely at the half mile marker when he crossed the finish line and stood the Hornet on his tail for a vertical climb. Big show off. By the time I finally crossed the finish line myself, doing 172 miles per hour, Lieutenant Walburn was somewhere up in the clouds. He'd passed the finish line going about 345 miles per hour. I'm sure I creamed him on gas mileage, though. All right, Baxter, it wasn't a contest. Your Blue Angel destroyed my Blue Devil. I gave it everything I had, but that F-18 is just too fast. How did it feel for you in the cockpit? Uh, pretty good. That thing gets up and goes pretty good once you put uh, 32,000 pounds of thrust going out the back end. Now, were you able to see the ZR-1 at all during the race? Uh, yes, I did. I, saw, I, I peeked over right away, and you kind of got a, a little bit of a lead on me initially, and then uh, I just kind of caught up and uh, went by. <laughs> I thought it might last a little longer than it did, but it didn't. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I think the only two jobs that people really might envy each other for are jet pilot and test car driver, maybe playboy photographer, but <laughs> right now the two of us maybe have the best jobs in the world. Would you like to uh, do a little trading places today and maybe try my vehicle, I try your jet? Sounds good, let's go. All right, let's try it out. All right. By now, Lieutenant Walborn is an old hand at breaking the sound barrier in the sky. But how would he feel piloting 638 supercharged Motown horsepower across the ground? Only one way to find out. Strap Mr. Blue Angel in behind the wheel and take the Blue Devil out for a full throttle blast. Okay, Baxter, we're in the uh, ZR1 now. You get a chance to try the Blue Devil coming from the Blue Angel. All right. Have you ever driven a Corvette before? Uh, I don't think I can remember if I've ever driven one before. All right, well, this is the ultimate Corvette. Okay. So this will be a memorable experience. Okay. Give it a shot. All right, we'll see what we shall do.
Obviously respectful of high-powered machinery, Lieutenant Walburn builds up to speed carefully. In no time, though, he's gunning the ZR-1 past 130 miles per hour and <laughs> loving it. Yeah. Of course, I'm probably getting in his way a bit by watching his every move, so I decide to climb out and let Lieutenant Walburn fly solo. Naturally, right away, he transforms into a teenager with Dad's car keys. At this point in his career, Lieutenant Walburn has accumulated more than 1,400 flight hours, and now about 20 minutes of seat time at the wheel of one of the world's most awesome ground-bound rockets. Now it's my turn. In the ready room, I begin suiting up for the ride of a lifetime, a no-holds-barred flight in a Blue Angels F.A. 18 Hornet. As Crew Chief Austin Armstrong belts me into the rear ejection seat of Blue Angel 7, he offers a few friendly words of advice. Basically, don't touch anything. During hard airshow maneuvers, Blue Angels pilots regularly experience forces many times the force of gravity, often over 7G, which makes a 200-pound man feel like he weighs more than 1,400 pounds and can squeeze the blood out of his skull as if it were caught in the jaws of a giant, invisible lemonade press. Key to surviving a flight in an airborne centrifuge like the F.A. 18 Hornet is mastering the so-called Hick maneuver. Basically, to keep from passing out during high G aerobatics, you have to squeeze your legs and grunt like hell to keep the blood up in your brain where it belongs. Done right, it sounds something like, <coughs> or in my case, well, you'll see. Ready to go? Uh, here we go. There's, here comes Bill Power there. And we'll go right to Afterburner to get you in the seat. Here comes Afterburner. Wow. And we're already at 60 knots. There's 80 knots. No wonder you beat me. 100. Here comes 120. 140. We'll see if you're going to want me back. 160 knots. Unbelievable. There's 180. There's Lieutenant Walburn is going to break me in easy. On takeoff, we're going vertical. You ready to go flying today? Let's go flying. All right, ready. Hit it. As we climb on out. Fantastic. Only five and a half G. Of course, Mr. Blue Angel is only getting warmed up. How about an Immelman turn, Arthur? Take a deep breath. Ready, hit it. As we pull on up. A little bit more G this time. There's five and a half Gs. Keep that squeeze going. There we go. Nice work. There we go. Now we get up over the top. Your G's going to kind of relax on us here. There we go. As we pull up over the top. And we'll roll up right here. Just relax. And we're going to roll to the left. And that's how we get in right behind someone. Or an inverted negative G pushover. There we go. And we're hanging upside down right now. What's our negative G here? Negative G is negative one. Uh-huh. And once you get your bearings here, I'm gonna go ahead and push forward a little bit on the stick. Get that negative two, two and a half G's. You feel like your eyeballs are popping out. They're coming out. All right, here we go. We're gonna push forward a little bit. There we go, it's minus two G's. And we'll roll up right. Ready, hit it. There we go. <laughs> Gotta get you there, huh? There's, that gets you, man. There's no technique to keep the blood down. That's the problem. Then comes a moment I've waited my whole life for. Time to break the sound barrier. And not while sipping champagne in the now defunct Concorde, but the way it's supposed to be done. Strapped into the ejection seat of a military fighter jet just a few hundred feet above the water. All right, you ready to go to Supersonic? Let's go. Right, here we go, we're gonna pull afterburner, nose on over. And I'll start my little stopwatch up here. And there's 180 knots. There's 200 knots. 225. 
There we go. That's 666 knots. I don't know the blue devil for you there. <laughs> any boats on the water right now, we're rocking with a sonic boom. But in the cockpit, I don't feel anything. Just wonderful. Naturally, Baxter isn't going to let me get away without a little extra pressure, Blue Angel style. Time for a minimum radius turn. Ready, hit it. There we go. We fleet off this airspeed. There's seven and a half Ds. Keep it going. You got it. There we go. Nice work. 7.3 Gs. Wow. I was starting to get tunnel on that one. Yeah. I heard you talking to yourself. That's great. That's how you motivate yourself. As we come into land, one more brutal turn past 7G just for good measure. All right. Go ahead and flex those legs. Take a deep breath. Ready. Hit it. There we go. Keep it going. There's 7G. Nice work. We got it. There we go. We'll roll on out here. Did you even hear a hick from Lieutenant Walburn? I didn't. I don't think the guy's even sweating. Nice job. Whew. Now I know how it feels to ride in a washing machine set on the spin cycle. Somehow, I've managed not to pass out, there even during several turns at well over 7G. My lunch is even still where it belongs. My brain, though, is now etched with a memory I'll never, ever forget. How do these guys do this day in and day out? And with other aircraft just a few feet away? Oh yeah, they're Blue Angels. And what does our Blue Devil versus Blue Angel race prove, you ask? Oh please, if you have to ask, you obviously don't understand the deep-seated Darwinian forces that compel boys of all ages to play at any opportunity with fast and expensive toys. What's clear after racing the Corvette ZR1 against the Boeing FA-18 Hornet, however, is that the US of A builds two of the world's most monumental and unforgettable speed machines. Doesn't matter which flavor you prefer, this is American engineering at its best. Red, white, and very, very blue.